Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of the course, Properties of Materials. So, let us just briefly recap the last lecture. So, in the last lecture, we looked at transformation of axis. So, basically, you have one set of orthogonal axis, let us say i, j, k, and you want to transform to or you want to transform from uh, uh, let us say another axis which is m and p. So, and uh, for example, for a stress one can use this relation sigma i j is equal to summation over n is equal to 1 to 3, summation over m is equal to 1 to 3 l i m l j n sigma m n. So, this is essentially uh, and where else are the cosines of angle between uh, i and m axis and j and n axis and sigma m n is basically depending upon the sub how do you add these. So, essentially we and, and this is also applicable for strain uh, as we will see later on and uh, you can write this in general form by not writing this summation, but it is implied that summation is there. and. Uh, so, we wrote you can write any any one. So, you can write sigma 1 1, you can write expression for sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3 and so on and so forth. And I would suggest you very strongly to do this exercise at home because and we, we give some certain examples of sigma x, x x and sigma, sigma x prime x prime sigma x prime y prime and so on and so forth. And then you can modify them a little bit by using the symmetry of tensors, stress tensors that is sigma i j is equal to sigma j i and then you can shorten it. And then we were looking at the concept of principal stresses. So, principal stresses and principal stress act, principal axis. So, principal stress axis if we define as 1, 2, 3, then principal stresses become sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 and this is what we were doing. So, let us take this further. So, so one can define a relation between the principal stress values that is sigma p cube minus i 1 sigma p square minus i 2 sigma p minus i 3 is equal to 0. And we wrote that these i's are nothing but i i's are nothing but uh, stress invariants. So, so, I 1 for instance one can write as sigma x x plus sigma y y plus sigma z z. I 2 would be sigma y z square plus sigma z x square plus sigma x y square minus sigma y y sigma z z minus sigma z z sigma x x minus sigma x x sigma y y and I 3 will be equal to sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z plus 2 sigma y z sigma z x sigma x y minus sigma x x sigma z x square sorry sigma x x sigma z y square minus sigma y y into sigma z x square minus sigma z z sigma x y square okay. and uh, this is where we were and so this basically i 1 is nothing but uh, essentially some of these three principal stress some some of these three normal stresses sigma x x sigma y y and sigma 3 3 and i 2 is this and i 3 is this. And in terms of principal stresses hence one can write these as So, we can write i 1 as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 okay. and 
I 2 can be written as minus of sigma 2 2 sigma 3 3 minus of sigma 3 3 into sigma 1 1 minus of sigma 1 1 into sigma 2 2 and I 3 can be written as sigma 1 1 into sigma 2 2 into sigma 3 3 is the uh, is the expression in terms of principal stresses. So, this is um, a way to write the principal stresses. So, let us do a solved example for example, uh, for instance. So, if you take a problem, so this will become little clearer uh, when you want to. So, let us let us first take the problem uh, of uh, the calculation of shear stress uh, stresses on other axis. Okay. So, what we have looked at basically, we first looked at the transformation and then we looked at the uh, expression for principal stresses with stress variants inbuilt in them and then from these stress variants one can calculate what are the values of principal stresses and that is what we are going to do now. So, let us assume there is a there is a bar which are under a force along this axis and let us say this axis is 2 1 0 crystallographic axis. Now, materials uh, deformed by a process as we will see later on called a slip on planes where ok. So, let us not invoke the phenomena of resolved shear stress but on certain planes ok, on certain place on which atoms can move easily. So, this direction along which the planes are let us say it is a 1 1 1 plane. So, 1 1 1 plane in a cubic system will have a normal which is 1 1 1 perpendicular to the plane and the direction along which the materials will atoms will move during deformation is the direction that lies within the plane and this is 1 0 1 type of direction and since it lies it lies in 1 1 1 plane the dot product of this direction with respect to plane should be equal to 0. As a result this direction happens to be 1 0 uh, bar 1 direction. So, basically we can say there is a so although the normal stress is applied along 2 1 0 axis the shear stress is on 1 1 1 plane and along 1 0 bar 1 direction. Okay. So, let us say we define 2 1 0 as m axis, 1 0 bar 1 as n and 1 1 1 as p. Okay. If these are the 3 conventions we follow then we can write the expression for tau n p. Tau n p is the shear stress within along this direction 1 0 1 and in 1 1 1 plane. Okay. So, if we if we now write the expression for this, this happens to be L p m multiplied by L n m into sigma m m. L p m is basically angle between angle between p and m that is angle between 2 1 0 and uh, 1 1 1 and this is the angle between n and m that is the angle between 2 1 0 and so cos of angle between 2 1 0 and 1 0 1 0 bar 1 okay. and sigma m m is the uh, stress that is applied and let us say this stress works out to be a roughly let us say uh, 3 mega Pascal. Okay. Okay. So, this is the 3 mega Pascal stress that is along the m direction and uh, so what is the angle between 2 1 0 and 1 1 1. So, that is nothing but 2 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1 divided by square root of 2 square plus 1 square plus 0 uh, multiplied by square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square this is the cos theta 
with, with uh, the angle cosine of the angle between 210 and 110. Now, the angle between these two is 2 into 1 plus 1 into 0 plus 1 into minus 1 divided by square root of 2 square plus 1 square plus 0 into square root of 1 square plus 0 plus minus 1 square into 3 MPA and this will turn out to be 2 plus 1 3 divided by square root of 5 into square root of 3. This will turn out to be 1 divided by square root of 3 5 into square root of 2 into 3 MPA. So, you can do the mathematics yourself. The stress will turn out to be about 1.4 to 1.5 mega Pascal. So, this will be the magnitude of shear stress that will act along 1 0 bar 1 direction when the stress applied normal to the face of the bar is uh, 3 MPA. This can be worked out by doing transformation of axis that just like we have done in this case. Okay. So, you can, you can work out for any, any system uh, equations like these and then determine what the stresses are going to be. Now, let us look at another example of related to principal stresses in principal stress calculation in a body which has been subjected to certain stress state. So, let us say we define sigma x is equal to 10 MPA, sigma y is equal to 8 MPA and sigma z is equal to minus 5 of MPA. So, we can calculate what is tau yz and tau zy tau yz and tau zy is given as minus of 4 MPA, tau zx is equal to tau xz which is given as minus of 4 MPA again. Sorry, this is uh, uh, let us see the above is 5 MPA and then tau xy which is equal to tau yx which is equal to minus of 8 MPA. So, we can calculate what I 1 is, I 1 is as we are saying, I 1 is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. Okay. If I 1 is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z, then we can calculate this as 5, uh, sorry, 10 minus uh, 10 plus 8 minus 5. This is equal to 13 MPA. Let us do the calculation for I 2. I 2 will be as we wrote earlier sigma y z square plus sigma z x square plus sigma x y square. So, we can replace this sigma with uh, essentially tau okay, minus of sigma y sigma z minus of sigma z sigma x minus of sigma x sigma. So, we have replaced the sigma y y with sigma y as the notation is. So, let us replace the values now here. So, this is 5 square plus minus 4 square plus minus of 8 square. This will be equal to uh, and this is again sigma y and sigma z. So, this is equal to 5 minus 4 minus 8 and then this is going to be 10 into 8 minus of 8 into minus 5 minus of 10 into minus 5. Okay. And if we do the sum, this is equal to 115 MPA square. And I 3 as we know is sigma x, sigma y, sigma z plus uh, we can write tau y z tau z x tau x y minus of sigma x into tau y z square minus of sigma y 
into tau x y square minus of sigma z into tau um, sorry y x z square ok. So, sigma x is so we can say this is 10 into 8 into minus 5 plus 2 into 5 into minus 4 into minus 8 minus sigma x is 10 into tau y z is 5 square minus of sigma y which is 8 into tau x z which is minus 4 square minus of minus 5 into tau x y which is minus 8 square. And if you do the maths this will turn out to be minus of 138 MPA cube ok. So, now let us do the substitution. So, sigma p cube minus of i 1 which is 13 into sigma p square minus of 115 sigma p plus 138 is equal to 0. So, this is i 1, this is i 2 and this is i 3 ok. So, basically this was the equation in which we have fitted the values and if you solve this above is uh, sigma p values turn out to be 1.08 MPA 18.7 MPA and minus 6.8. So, this is the solution you are going to obtain for the three principal stresses that is sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 ok. So, I hope uh, it is clear from the formula that how does one determine the stresses uh, sigma. <coughs> so, now what we do is that so having having looked at the stresses in little detail. Uh, there is something which is also called as Morse stresses if time permits we will come to that later on, but now let us go back to the concept of strains ok. So, so what we have worked out in stresses until now is basically what stresses are true stress, engineering stress, what is stress tensor, the transformation of axis and so true stress, engineering stress, stress tensor we also looked at shear stresses and we looked at transformation of axis and then we looked at what is how do you work out the principal stresses. So, these are the few topics that we looked at under stress. Now, let us move on to the next topic that is strain in the materials. So, so if you consider a solid is being deformed. So, let us say a very small strain that is infinitesimally small strain, normal strain d epsilon is defined as a very small let us say natural strain ok, slash true strain is defined as d epsilon is equal to d l by l. So, this is the uh, infinitesimal increase slash decrease in length. So, let us say if L naught is the initial length and L f is the final length, then this is from L naught to L f d L by L. So, it is integrated from L naught to L f 
and we get a strain which is ln of L f divided by L naught. This is called as true strain or natural strain. Okay. There is another strain which is, uh, so let us say this is true strain. There is another strain which is called as engineering strain. which is given as E is equal to delta L divided by L naught, which is that is change in length or dimension with respect to to original length. The problem is engineering strain is not a very accurate measure of real strain in the material and there are a few differences. So, uh, at very small strains these two values correspond with respect to each other, but when the values increase to large strains then there is a loss of correspondence between the two values. And the reason is true strain is the spontaneous true strain uh, natural strain which, which gets added which gets uh, which is equal in both tension and compression whereas engineering strain has problems with respect to addition as well as in uh, when you calculate them with respect to tension and compression as we will see later. Now let us see what is the relation between the two things. So relation between So, we can write this as L f minus L naught divided by L naught. So, we write this epsilon as L n of L f divided by L naught. I can write this as L f minus L naught plus L naught divided by L naught and this becomes E plus 1. So, basically epsilon is equal to L n of 1 plus E as it is always as it is expressed. So, this is the relationship between true strain and uh, engineering strain. And since epsilon is equal to L n of 1 plus E, if we do if we open the if we if we do the series expansion then we can write this as E minus E to the power E square divided by factorial 2 plus E cube by factorial 3 minus E 4 by factorial 4 and so on and so forth. So, we can see that as E tends to 0, epsilon tends to E, but this happens only at which means at very, very small strains. So, let us do a little calculation. Okay. So, we have a value of E, let us say we go from 0 0.001 point zero 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 five to point zero zero uh, point zero zero one to point zero zero five zero one to point zero five to point one to point five to one point zero okay these are the values of small e which are changing so if we now calculate epsilon which is ln one plus e at 0 0.001 of strain engineering strain the value is 0 0.0000999 which is equal to 0 0.0001 equivalent and if we calculate the ratio this turns out to be 1.001 if you calculate for 0 0.0005 this turns out to be 0 0.0004999 and this is equivalent to 0 0.0005 and the ratio turns out to be 1.002. And if you do for this, this is 0 0.00999 uh, and this turns out to be 0 0.001 ratio is nearly 1.002. Okay. And 0 0.005 will show you value of 0 0.00498 
which is again sort of approximated to 0 0.005 and the ratio will increase to 0 0.004. And then you keep on doing this when you come to let us say 0 0.01 then the value that you get is 0 0.0098 and you can again approximate it to 0 0.001, 0 0.005, 0 0.05 will give you a value of 0 0.0487. 0.1 give will give you a value of 0 0.095, 0 0.5 will give you, give you a value of 0 0.405 and 1 will give you a value of 0 0.693 and you can see this ratio for example, if you calculate here it will be 1.443, for this it will be 1.233, for this it will be 1.049, for this it will be 1.025 and for this it will be something like 1.01. .01. So, you can see that these two values start diverging somewhere around 0 0.01. So, this is where you have sort of uh, increased differences. So, it is only at small strains there is a good correspondence. But at large strains, there are large differences. So, this is one major difference that E and E have good correspondence only at very small. That is why true strain is uh, a much better uh, measure of strain than the engineering strain. What we are going to do in the next class now is uh, we will take up uh, more difference, we will understand more differences between the true strain and engineering strain, especially in terms of how do they add up and how do they how are they related to um, tension and compression as well as how are they related to volume change. Uh, so, what we have done in this class is we have looked at basically uh, the principal stresses, uh, how do you work out the principal stresses and then how do you calculate the principal stresses in a, in a, in a slip, in a, we just had a simple example of uh, a tensile test in which a force is applied to normal to the faces and then we calculate the stress on, on, a, on a plane on which slip occurs, we will come to the phenomenon of slip later on and then we also worked out what the magnitude of uh, principal stresses. So, so in, in the previous case we worked out the shear stress and then we worked out the value of uh, principal stresses once we know the value of principal and other normal and shear stresses. And then we looked at the concept of strain, the difference between true and engineering strain and we will dwell upon it further in the next lecture. Thank you.